is psychological aspects of cancer. But first, we have to start by the first segment, which is medical news. So we will start by that uh, Bright and Hope activity aims to pay attention to early detection of breast cancer and work on community outreach among women's societies. Bright and Hope activity was held in the Kingdom Tower in Riyadh and organized by Abdul Latif Center. Mr. Ahmed Al Aqil, Vice President of Competition Committee in Saudi Federation, demanded on his speech the need of providing practical, moral, and significant support to cancer patients. Mr. Al Aqil stressed on the effectiveness of paying attention to early detection of breast cancer and spreading awareness among women, communities, and now let us watch the report together. We are here today at the Lightning the Hope event organized by the Saudi Cancer Society and Abdel Latif Early Diagnosis and sponsored by Al Mamlaka Center. This event is from October 1st to October 31st. The main activity, as they can see, is to be single light, to buy single life for 50 side reals, which goes to charity to the Saudi Center Society. At the event place, more than 400 ladies have been to the clinical examination which is provided here at Al Mamlaka Center for free of charge. Visitors have been have completed putting 1,519 1, lights in place now which leaves 781 lights away. Welcome back, dear viewers. The second segment of medical news is about international food exhibition Paris. Saudi ambassador in France, Khalid bin Mohammed Al Angari, the presence of he stated the presence of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has been important this year in the French fair of food business. The representatives of the food companies, like those producing dates and milk are looking to promote and export their products on an international level. And now let us watch the report. One of the most important international business food fairs takes place each year in Paris. This year, the French fair is welcoming huge stands animated by Saudi businessmen who are doing their utmost to introduce their food products coming from their far-flung country. These products are varied, like milk, oil, juice, and especially dates, the products by which the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is known worldwide. A lot of visitors have appreciated the coming of Saudi Arabia's products and their marketing all over the world. The presence of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in the International Food Fair CL has been organized by the Saudi Ministry of Commerce and Investment and the Saudi Expert Development Authority too. Of course, I am so happy with what I have seen today from the Saudi Arabian exhibitors who are showing a part of the food production of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which has evolved, thanks God, either with its variety or its way of producing and marketing. All the exhibitors are eager to represent the kingdom's local products. There is even a cooperation between them, and the show is hosting a lot of rivals, but giving an important opportunity for our representatives and, of course, our original products. 
the show will have an impact for sure to promote the kingdom's products in the whole world. The marketing happens here, in the first place, and it's huge here. And even when I talked with the exhibitors, they said that they are happy to represent the kingdom. They started working from the first day and they will continue the exhibition with pleasure. The kingdom's presence aims to introduce the exportation of local products, known already in different countries. More than 20 names of food producers are here to highlight their good quality products and their originality. We'd like to thank Saudi too for being here, visiting our boat. Uh, the export is very important for the Saudi economy and I think it's part of the, the new initiative that the government is taking. We came to Seattle because we're looking for to export to other, especially to Africa and to also to Europe. The, the French-speaking uh, customer usually they come to, to France and they, that's why we, uh, we came to Seattle. Export for, for us, for example, represent really uh, uh, almost 30 to 40 percent of our sales. So export is very important. The participation of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in the International Food Fair, Seattle, comes within the long-term economic evolution program as it is wished in the vision of 2030. Actually, our participation in Seattle exhibition, one of the biggest food fair in the world, and our target is to uh, to open the export market, extend our uh, uh, market in all over the world uh, with our products, which is, uh, as you see here, we do have the dry product, cooking stuff by dates, and we do have the frozen dough items. It's really important for Saudi companies to be uh, in all the exhibitions around the world to let the people know that Saudi Arabia is one of the countries that produce lot, many products. Uh, to the Middle East and outside Africa or Asia. The Saudi food is known by its quality, freshness and healthy aspect. That's why it has lured customers from all over the world. Welcome back our dear viewers to Elixir of Life. Our next segment will be health myths and facts the first one, you need a daily multivitamin, and number two, eat breakfast to lose weight. Let us watch the report. Welcome back, our dear viewers, to Elixir of Life. Now, coming to the most important segment, 
which is the episode theme of the week will talk about uh, psychological aspects of cancer and our distinguished guest today is Dr. Talib Khafaji. He is uh, a consultant clinical uh, psychologist from King Fahad Medical City. He is an international figure. He is highly authored, highly published and author of many uh, textbooks in clinical psychology. Welcome Dr. Talib. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will start uh, by uh, just if you would like to briefly uh, tell us about the conference or the purpose of the conference you held at King Fahad Medical City, I have uh, the right to treat my pain. Mm. Uh, that was a conference last week and it was about uh, the cancer pain and it was a collection of different presentation about how can we deal with the cancer patient from different discipline. My contribution was about the psychological aspect of the cancer because we know very well that in every illness there is a psychological or there are a lot of psychological elements in every illness. The last study in the United States clearly indicated that about 86% of the people, they come to the emergency room, they have some psychological problems. So this is, um, that was a conference that we shed light upon um, how are we going to deal with our patient? As, an, as, as you know, in King Fahad Medical City, we highlight the teamwork, which mm -hmm. means a collection of different discipline to tackle the patient from uh, his need or her need. Okay, I think this will lead us to the next question. What's the relationship between cancer and psychological aspect of the patient? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Muhammad, uh, we have uh, three types of personality in our field. Uh, personality A, that's the person which is very hyperactive person. Mm -hmm. uh, go and get the things done. Uh, never say tomorrow, I need to do it right now, right now, right now. This is what we call this kind of person is personality A. And then we have personality B, and personality B, oh, well, let's do it tomorrow. Okay, this kind of personality, why, why we are rushing to things? Just, is, just keep it. Which is common in our society. Yeah, it's definitely, yeah. Well, let's, let's do it tomorrow or next week. And um, type of personality C is the personality that they take a lot of pain and abuses but they never assert themselves, so to speak. Which mm -hmm. means a person with the type C personality, they are subjugated to verbal abuse or physical mm -hmm. abuse, but what they do, they bottle it up inside of themselves mm -hmm. and they don't show up. show up or they say it or they assert themselves. If, let's say, for example, if you angry them or if you insult them, just they take it inside of they have a smile as if nothing happened. And as a result of that, they build up a lot of anger inside of themselves. And then there is an old statement, um, illness is a, or a cancer is an anger built up and went in a field trip all over our body. Mm -hmm. Because no matter we as a human being, Dr. Muhammad, no matter how much we can take from the outside, uh, our body cannot take it. Our mind may store it in our unconscious mm -hmm. mind, but after that, we have to manifest it in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. This is why we have a lot, let's say for example, um, if uh, irritable 
bowel syndrome. Which is common in our society. Common because mm -hmm. as a result of a lot of anger and anxiety. And I think we are an anxiety ridden society. Or you have headache because it's very easy mm -hmm. for us to say I have a headache rather than saying I'm mm -hmm. depressed or mm -hmm. I am anxious because we take the physical illness um, uh, as, as, uh, as okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, psychological illness is still is not accepted. Even a lot of people in our society mm -hmm. started to be aware about the psychological difficulty for us as a human being, and we have really to seek help for it. So this is type C personality, and then later on in their life, unfortunately, they develop a cancer. This is mainly the, it's, uh, it's the, the bottom line of the cancer personality. It doesn't mean that. I think this leads us to the, what's yeah. the cancer? Is there uh, a such cancer personality? It's new for us, I think, for the public as well. So if you explore, uh, shed light on this, okay, cancer personality, this is a new terminology. We, yeah, which is cancer personality, is the C personality, is the people are so polite uh -huh. and so and assertive. Uh, yeah. and they take the abuses. Uh, for example, the mother that she raised up a family and she spent all her life taking care of the children and taking care of the relative and taking care of the, and she never say anything. She never asserted herself. Unfortunately, there is a, there is a good possibility mm -hmm. that she may develop um, a cancer. However, then people may, our audience, maybe they say, hey, wait a minute, where is the genes? Mm -hmm. Okay, because we think, well, Dr. Muhammad, genes play between five to 10% of any illness. Yeah, because we say genetics load the gun and the environment pulls the trigger. Okay. Exactly, this is the loaded gun theory, mm -hmm. which is the gun, you put the gun on the table for many years, never hurt anyone. But if somebody comes and pull the trigger, as you said, mm -hmm. and that's when the damage happened. So yes, we have genetic predisposition. We all, Dr. Muhammad, you mm -hmm. and me, we have, we have now a cancer mm -hmm. cells in our body, but our immune system able mm -hmm. to get rid of it. But if we really subjugate ourselves to a lot of pain and suffering, and we internalize that, not externalize it, mm -hmm. then there is a good possibility that we may develop a cancer. Excellent, Dr. Talib. I think this lead us to the second question, which is very important. Why do some people one have breast cancer and the other one have colon cancer and the other one having lung cancer? Why? Okay. Okay. Uh, this is a great uh, question, Dr. Muhammad. I think th Russia done a fabulous research in this area. Excellent. Unfortunately, the West didn't do that about the metaphoric um, causes of illness. Why? Why it, and, and I wrote a chapter in my book, The Metaphoric Causes of mm -hmm. Illness, why some people, they have a throat cancer, the other one uterus cancer, the other one a bone mm -hmm. cancer. Mm -hmm. I don't think, Dr. Muhammad, that's happened arbitrarily. Mm -hmm. um, it's happened by a conspiracy cooked in the unconscious mind. For example, there was a woman came to me in my clinic in America, mm -hmm. and she complained about uterus cancer. And I told her, uh, uh, tell me the story about your life. And she started to tell me that she delivered uh, three sons and two daughters. And unfortunately, five of her children didn't visit her in the Christmas or Thanksgivings. Mm -hmm. And as you know, in the West, the Christmas and Thanksgivings are very important time for the people down there. And normally the family get together, they exchange car, they exchange mm -hmm. phone number. And those five kids, they spread all over USA, but they didn't call her or they sent her a card or they contact her. And she really developed a lot of hate to her uterus. And she always say, I hate the uterus that carry those five people. Mm -hmm. What kind Very of people? Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And long behold, she developed 
a cancer in her uterus. There is a fascinating story happened in KFMC. We went to visit one of our patient mm -hmm. and he has a colon cancer. Lo and behold, the patient told me the following story and Dr. Ali was with me witnessing this. And the, the, the person is a Saudi person. He is in the military, went to Egypt 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, sitting in one of those coffee houses in Egypt uh, drinking mm -hmm. tea. And there was a person sitting next to him. So he engaged in a conversation with that person and said, what do you do? He said, I'm a doctor. He said, what is your specialty? He said, in colon cancer. He said, give me your phone number in case if I have a colon cancer. cancer. That's 10 years ago, and he kept the phone with him until he came to the hospital. After 10 years, he developed a colon cancer. Very interesting. Story. Absolutely, okay. because there is a certain part in our body that we don't like unconsciously, okay. and we inflict the illness. Illness doesn't ha do not happen arbitrarily at all. It's okay. a conspiracy cooked in the unconscious mind and manifested in the part of our body on the part of our body that we don't like. Okay. Yeah. I think the the theme of your conference I have the right to treat my pain. So talking to is a uh, concept of pain is it all biological or psychological? From the medical school mm -hmm. we learn that the biological okay causes of pain or the mechanism but what are the psychological aspects so is it a mix or is it biological or psychological i think that's important to explore yeah it's it's really fascinating doctor to tell you an experiment done in lebanon they blindfold people and they gave them a small ball it's an iron ball and they told them, we are giving you an iron ball, it's very hot. And we want to measure how much do you tolerate the heat of this iron ball. But they are blindfolded, those mm. people. And they gave them the iron ball. They put them on the palm of their hand. The people, within a few seconds, they couldn't take it, they throw it on <coughs> the ground and they burn their palm. But the ball was not hot. The ball was cold. Oh, that's very interesting. So what's happened, they conditioned themselves that this ball is very hot and I have to tolerate the heat and they couldn't tolerate the heat. So I think pain can be psychological and can be phys physical as well. But sometimes the, the physical, leave a trace. Let's say we get a physical pain, but the brain register it. And what's happened, the brain keep bringing it mm -hmm. over and over and over. And as you know, Dr. Muhammad, we have a brain. And I wrote a book about the brain. I call it a sly brain. Mm -hmm. Sly in Arabic means khabith. Our mind is really difficult to manage. Oftentimes, our mind dilute us, didn't tell us the truth mm -hmm. about. And our mind can tell us and uh, exaggerate things, exaggerate illness, and tell us about this pain here, this pain is here. But the reality, there is no pain here. And there is a gentleman that this is really a fascinating experiment done as well in the West that mm. a person is unable to walk because he has a lot of a trouble in his knees. Mm -hmm. And when he came and they inspected him and they investigate and there is no really real causes. Mm -hmm. So the doctor put him under anesthesia and made a simple cut. Mm -hmm. And they sew it together and say, listen, I really got the, the, the illness out of you and you are fine. I think I just connect something, something wrong with you and you will be fine. 
and within a few days the guy is walking in reality the mm -hmm. doctor didn't do just make incision in his knee okay, very so here is 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 the psychological the psychological condition we really need to pay attention to it in any type of illness excellent mm. very important thank you dr talib mm. how do we empower patient and let him be in charge in the healing and recovery uh, process uh, Dr. Muhammad, sadly enough, uh, most of our health care provider, they don't empower patient. We think, or sometimes maybe the patient is participating in that. To engage in that. Engage in that. Uh, they, they, think, they think it's like a car mechanic. Okay. I bring the car to you, and you change the tire, and you fix the brake, and you do this. And it's, it's not like that. It's a, this is a total human being. Mm -hmm. How we empower them when we engage them in the process of recovery okay. and healing. And how we engage them. We, uh, our, the patients are not dumb. They know sometimes they come to me and they say, how are we going to break the bad news to the patient? I say the patient already knows, but you think the patient doesn't know. Ask the patient always. In, in the, when, when I suggest to our colleagues in King Fahad Medical City, I say, ask the patient before you break the news, ask what, what kind of illness do you have? Mm -hmm. And you will be amazed the patient knows the illness. So you empower them by having totality of the patient engage. Mm -hmm. What do we mean by totality, Dr. Totality is mind, body, spirit. Because Dr. Muhammad, mm -hmm. hypocrite, the father of Western medicine, what did he say? He said illness is the imbalance in the three areas, mm -hmm. mentally, Emo and emotionally, the mind and physically, uh, as well as spiritually. So if there is imbalance, how, how do you heal the patient? By uh, creating or restoring the balance to the patient life. And unfortunately, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's, uh, you mentioned mind, soul, and the body because the biopsychosocial model in the modern medicine. Do you think our modern physicians are true healers? Or as, as you mentioned, they are just... Um, practitioners. Practitioners. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, doctor, is the answer is a practitioner. Uh, <coughs> uh, is there any difference between healer and uh, physician? Healer is when you really believe in reactivating the healing system inside of the patient. Very beautiful. Okay. The practitioner is that you really think when the patient leave from your office, he has a prescription in his hand. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and uh, they, the, when you give him the prescription, most of the patient, they say, okay, do I'm going to take those pills and I'm, I'm going to feel okay. But what you need is really, you need really to, to believe in the totality and the mind power over the, how can the patient use his mind to heal himself. When you mm -hmm. give him this pill, say, listen, I really believe strongly that this pill, it may help you tremendously, but you can take it as the following. And I have a faith in you. When you come next time, you will be in a tremendous health. When you say, uh, when you come next time to see me in a tremendous health, you, you believe it or not, patient will program that in his mind. And he started to meet, to work, to meet the expectation of his doctor. I want to look good in the eyes of my doctor. I want to have a tremendous health. Mm -hmm. I think that's one. How to reactivate the healing system inside the human body? I think that's very complex. I, you can touch upon this. Yeah. Is it possible or it's uh, a difficult uh, task? Uh, Dr. it is 
very possible that mm -hmm. you really, when you are trained to look to the totality mm -hmm. of the patient and you re uh, reactivate the healing system of the patient by asking the patient some background informa uh, information and what's, what's caused this illness, why you are now ill, mm -hmm and what's happened to you? Give me some background about your childhood. Because Dr. Muhammad, I think we, illness is a very enticing and very attractive mm -hmm. illness. How is very attractive? Okay. Because when we were kids, when is the time that our mom and dad hug us and give us a chicken soup and love us and be close to us. When we are sick. When we are sick. So this is building our unconscious mind and we really still seek the attention. So when we become adult, still there are a lot of childhood needs that we need attention as the adult. So we manufacture the illness and we need the attention. So what we do when we activate the healing system by going back to the childhood and see how did we really spend our childhood because our personality is shaped dr muhammad Good by thing. the first six years of our life okay mm -hmm. oh that's very good uh, what are the best uh, preventive measures uh, against cancer okay uh, the best uh, preventive measure, number one, is doctor living a balanced life. What do we mean a balanced life? Definitely, we have to exercise. And people say, why do we have to exercise? Well, our body designed since the time and hunting and gathering, we go to the forest and hunt animals and climb trees. So our body has a lot of joints. Mm -hmm. And sedentary lifestyle is not suitable to us. Yeah. Watching TV a couple of hours, that's, that's hurt our system. We are the most inactive uh, population in the world. We are uh, occupying the third most lazy or physically inactive uh, population in the world. That's important you highlighted this. You can carry on, Dr. Talib. Yeah. So we need to exercise by any means. Okay, there exercise. Yeah, by it. Second thing, we need to eat a balanced diet. What mm -hmm. do we mean by a balanced diet? And this is Dr. Muhammad is a very controversial mm -hmm. issue about food and diet, very controversial, because we hear every day something new about the diet mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and food. Balanced diet, which means we eat at least 70% of our food is a live food, is not dead food. Mm. What do you mean dead food? Dead food is the food that we cook. This is a dead food. Okay. Live food Fresh is right? a fruit, vegetable, and cooked food. Mm -hmm. And these are great to our body. If we really eat uh, live food, because live food, this is what the food that God gave us, Look at the apple, it's so beautiful. Look at the grapes, it's so beautiful. The, yes. Look at the bell pepper with all this color, it's so beautiful. This, these are live food. And we f if we put it in our body, regenerate new energy in our body. So we need to eat a balanced diet. And we unfortunately, we, did we do not drink a lot of water. Even we are in a in a hot environment and I ask people sometimes simple things I say do you drink water well I really don't like water and I say okay squeeze a little bit lemon and drink it okay so we need to drink a lots of water okay. is the life um, the other thing is that when it comes to food is, uh, and, and uh, balanced life doctor I think there is really important things any physician when meet the patient the fairest question ask them do you have a good bowel movement right. bowel movement is so essential 
And I have seen in my clinic a lot of people are constipated. Dr. Talib, we'll come back to you. We have to go for a short report about the conference. I have the right to treat uh, my pain. Please stay with us. Sale, uh, chairman of palliative care department at uh, King Fayad Medical City, Riyadh. Uh, we are organizing the fourth cancer pain uh, symposium uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, the aim of this uh, uh, symposium to educate the healthcare provider how they assist and manage cancer pain. Uh, we know that 90% of the cancer patient has uh, pain. Unfortunately, majority of them, the pain is not under control. Uh, the, 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 for many reasons. One of those reasons is the healthcare provider not uh, educate enough to, to use the, the medication and uh, do intervention. So uh, our target to uh, educate uh, the healthcare provider, physician, nurses, and all uh, team how they manage and treat it, uh, cancer pain effectively and make those patients uh, 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 comfortable and the pain under control. Doctor, a message you'd like to send uh, to the viewers and the community regarding today's uh, uh, subject. What's the message will be? Okay, um, the message that we're going to deliver, you have pain, we can manage. So please don't be um, uh, afraid from using the medication that was prescribed by your physician. The, all the medication is safe if under uh, a good hand and uh, the good physician. So for any cancer patient who has a pain, and he's suffering uh, day and no night. Uh, please, you have to uh, visit the, the, the pain specialist and take medication, and we can control more than 90% of your pain. I'm uh, Dr. Balaji, and uh, I'm basically from India, but I'm working here in King Fahad Medical City for uh, the last uh, four years in the Department of Palliative Medicine. I am a specialist in cancer pain and uh, palliative care. Um, uh, today is uh, the fourth uh, cancer pain symposium and uh, um, it's a pleasure to be a, a part of this team um, uh, working towards the betterment of uh, the management of cancer pain. Uh, we're going to talk about the latest advances uh, in um, cancer pain management uh, in the next uh, two days. Uh, and uh, it's a pleasure to be a part of this uh, team. We're doing great work, um, as, as can be seen in uh, uh, the various presentations that, are, uh, that have already been done uh, since in the morning. Um, so uh, I, uh, I thank the organizing uh, uh, committee, the hospital, uh, for giving me an opportunity to be a part of this uh, great team and uh, the symposium. Thank you. Welcome back, dear viewers, to Elixir of Life, and welcome, Dr. Talib, again. So just we stopped. Thank you for having me, Dr. Muhammad. Excellent. Ah, we exactly. stopped at very important topic that constipation as a cause of cancer. You know that colorectal cancer mm. is the most common cancer among males in Saudi Arabia. Mm. So now just you can highlight about. Um, yeah. Constipation, doctor, means that you uh, what you keep a lot of toxicity okay. in your body. Poisonous, okay. Mm -hmm. It's a poisonous, and you really don't have energy. You feel lethargic. You feel tired. You really feel very upset and uh, frustrated. And I have seen a patient. They come to me, and they've been constipated for four or five days a week sometime, and I have seen a patient, she told me for 15 days, imagine she never went out. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's really can be, can be hazardous to the health. Mm -hmm. 
I will uh, tell you about something really fascinating in China. Mm -hmm. in, in, in our Arab world, when we meet somebody, when we meet each other in the morning, what do we say? We say, good morning, good morning. And in China, what they ask, they ask, do you have a good bowel movement today? Very interesting, okay. Huh? Because bowel movement is indispensable. It's essential for our health. And we have to go to the bathroom at least one or two times mm -hmm. a day in order to evacuate the toxicity mm -hmm. from our body other than that, it will cause a havoc in our health. Mm -hmm. um, we heard recently a lot about the spontaneous remission mm. of uh, cancer. Mm. Is there uh, spontaneous remission, in fact? Yeah, Dr. Muhammad, there is a good reference about spontaneous remission. There is a, a physician from USA. His name is Andrew Whale. And I think if our audience can go and check and see who is Andrew Whale, he, he's, a, he's a still alive in his late 80, 90. He's a fascinating guy. He wrote a book, Spontaneous Remission. And he brought a lot of difficult cases. Spontaneous remission, which means that people were healed, was healed by themselves without medical intervention. Even in the most difficult illness like cancer. And um, there is another guy who wrote a book as well. His name is Joe Dispanzo. And this gentleman was riding a bicycle. He is a chiropractic was riding his bicycle and he had an accident. As a result of the accident, he was paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And he has to go through a lot of operations. What he did, he really reactivate. And anybody can go and see Joe Dispanzo. And he wrote a lot of books about this. Mm -hmm. And they can s see him in YouTube and in any, in, in any literature. And he wrote, uh, he healed himself and he become international speaker about how you reactivate your healing system. Because when God created us, God put within us strong healing system. But unfortunately, sometime we paralyze, we cripple the healing system. This is why we don't heal from a simple illness. Mm -hmm. But if we reactivate and focus on our inner power, our own inner energy, our own um, inner motivation to be healthy, you will be amazed to see there are how many people can do great job. I think and healing themselves. Because many physicians, they don't believe in this. Um, I think that's important, maybe controversial topic. Do we, I mean, we don't want to send a message to the public that they should not take their treatment. They should not, they should refuse chemotherapy or surgery or radiotherapy. Can you just, because we want to send a message that it's... No, uh, the, the message is so, uh, please, we are not saying that. We are saying beside the treatment Excellent. that you have, adjuvant, okay. adjunct to it, mm. use your healing system. Excellent. Yeah. And Dr. Muhammad, there are about now in 37% of American medical school, this is statis statistically speaking, mm -hmm. they are starting to teach physician mind, body, soul, connection. Mm -hmm. So this is not something that we really take it for granted. No, they are teaching it now, how to help the patient to reactivate there. And you, 
as an agent, as a physician, as a doctor, you are an agent of healing to the patient. Facilitator, okay? Yeah. Anyway, do you have any live examples from Saudi Arabia about spontaneous uh, remission? It comes to your mind if you have? I really did not see in my practice that, uh, but you hear once in a while, you say people, we hear, we uh, hear. You, you, you see people that they really have an illness and uh, they want to Mecca and yes. I think, and by the will of God, definitely it's a holy place. Yes. When you we go really and you submit yourself to God, because وَإِذَا مَرِضْتْ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينِي فَهُوَ الشِّفَاءَ مِنْهُ بالتأكيد. But if you really submit yourself sincerely, sincerely and yeah. totally to the will of God, I don't think God will disappoint you. Excellent. That's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, what's the uh, take-home message and the elixir of life? Is there anything called elixir of life? You elixir can of life. Doctor, this is incredible. Prolonged life. <laughs> and that's why the name of our program. Okay? Yeah, the elixir yeah. of life. Doctor, there is a study done in Harvard University. Mm. And they asked people, what is the most important things in life? And the study lasted 76 years. And they found out the most important things in life is to love and be loved. Loved, to and, love be loved. and be loved. This is one thing. Second thing, you really the other thing, uh, other part of elixir of life is to have an inner peace and serenity. Don't let your mind take over you. You take over your mind because if you let your mind take over you you will live a miserable life the other part of elixir of life is to have a positive thinking because dr muhammad negative thinking like a flat tire get you to nowhere mm. very interesting dr Talib. Thank you very much. It was really a stimulating uh, interview and it's a great uh, pleasure and honor uh, being with us and hopefully see you in the next uh, episodes. Thank so you for having me, Dr. Muhammad. Thank you. Thank now you. Uh, we are, we'll head to the last segment of our program, which is Health Benefit. I'm a consultant in oncology and palliative care medicine at King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Stress Center in Riyadh. Uh, and of course, uh, we thank you so much for being with our show. Uh, sir, as a speaker, uh, tell us about coming here and attending this event, sir. And uh, can you share with us some information about it? Yeah, definitely. These gatherings actually will benefit every individual of us. First of all, we have to update our knowledge about managing cancer pain, meet the colleagues in Kingdom Saudi Arabia, distribute the knowledge among all the centers in the Saudi Arabia and to the young physicians. The idea and the aim is to improve management of cancer pain all over the country. Uh, and tell us, sir, uh, do you want to uh, tell us about how, how much big the problem of cancer here in Saudi Arabia? Uh, can you give us some numbers about it? Cancer in general or cancer pain, you mean cancer pain in Saudi Arabia? Of course, this is a international problem as a whole but it's more obvious in our part of the world even in Saudi Arabia although we are lucky enough in Saudi Arabia we are one of the most advanced country in the Arab world in dealing with cancer pain due to distribution of many new tertiary advanced cancer centers in the country but still we have still we have a lot of steps to go on and to improve ourselves that's why we are here and we make these gatherings to update ourselves and to increase our knowledge about enhancing the advances in cancer pain in our country, Saudi Arabia. Uh, a message I'd like to send to the viewers and people are watching. What's the message? The message that, uh, alhamdulillah, we are lucky 
in our country in Saudi Arabia. They have many advanced centers to treat cancer, and we have the facilities to improve them. And we say that please trust your physicians, trust your country, trust your centers. We have all the facilities. We need to have interaction between us and you as a patients and families, and we are ready to help in both directions. And of course, sir, we thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having us here with Shoulder Bay. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Welcome, dear viewers, to Elixir of Life. Now, the last segment of our program, Health Benefit of Pomegranate. Please stay with us. <laughs> 